So today, we are on my friend's construction property and I knew the story we were gonna be telling from Jesus. And I thought, man, I need to call up Taylor and see if I can show everyone what it looks like. The same kind of picture that was in the mind of those that were listening in to Jesus as he was trying to tell them how they should live their life. And so here we are. So now I wanna to read to you the parable. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. When I read this parable this past week, I thought immediately of my experience in Central America. I was on the beach there, we had just finished working, and there was a house on the sand. Like right where we would walk out to go into the water, there was a house, and it was from a foreigner, maybe from up here in the United States. But they wanted to build it really quick, and they wanted it on the beach, and it was really too expensive for them to dig down and to hit bedrock or to put in deep footings. They just wanted the house. They had this dream, and they wanted the dream, and they wanted it now. And so they built the house, but I couldn't help but look at that house and remember that just a few miles up, we were there because houses had been washed away before from the river mouth. If you don't have that deep foundation, you don't have a future. And so many of us, like these two guys in the parable, we want a home, we want a house, we want a life. We're all building. Both of these people that Jesus is talking about are building. And we're building a life. And so Jesus goes through the entire Sermon on the Mount, giving us lessons for life on marriage, on how to care for people, on how to interact with our enemies, on forgiveness, on prayer, all of that. And as he's going through all of that, he says, now look, this is everything I just told you. But did you hear me? Are you gonna put it into practice? Because both of the men that built the house, they knew the rules, they knew the guidelines. He said, the person that hears me is like the one that goes down to the rock. The person that hears me but doesn't do what I say is like the guy that put his house on the sand. So what I wanna do now is I wanna have my friends explain to you this project. They specialize in putting in foundations. They specialize in building things that will last. And I want you to remember this as we go through this entire short message. The quality of your foundation determines your future. I'm Taylor with Shoreline Construction. And I'm David with Web Construction. Yeah, so we've been designing this project for a couple years now. We're going to be building a restaurant on Del Mar in the middle of San Clemente, and we're really excited to get rolling. We've been waiting for the grading permit to get uh, finalized, uh, only to finally get it and get David in here as the excavation contractor to over excavate this entire lot. The geologist and the soils engineer uh, requires us to pull out about three extra feet of soil off the out of this uh, pad and stockpile it over there and then compact the area, certify the soils is, is of competent soil. And, uh, and then David starts putting it back in and, and uh, what's that machine you tamp it down it's with? It's called a sheep's foot compactor. So he compacts all the soil and then it gets tested and then we're good to build. But unfortunately, no sooner do we break ground, we got a, our first rainstorm of the year and it flooded the site and we also hit an underground stream so we've got some complications. Footings. Yeah, so the, the next part of the project would be coming in here and trenching for the footings for the, the, uh, the structure that's going to be built on this site and so what we'll do is we'll come in and 
and, uh, and entrench and install steel that's going to strengthen the, 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 the actual uh, foundations and um, then we'll pour concrete and, and uh, ultimately have a really nice... Uh, lots and lots of concrete. Yeah, really nice foundation and a uh, really nice slab that the, the structure is gonna, going to be supported by. Is this a mat slab? I think it's it's what, a mat slab. It's I a think twelve or eighteen yeah, it's inches. it's a twelve inch mat slab. It's a nice thick concrete slab, yeah, probably nice and flat. I think the footings might be twenty four inch footings on this. Yeah, the footings aren't as deep as you'd imagine for a two story restaurant on Del Mar, but they, you know, again are certifying that this is competent soil, so we won't need to go quite as deep. I think we'd probably rather go a bit deeper, but yeah. The engineer calculated uh, twenty four inch footings. It would crack. Yeah, your yeah. building would settle and you'd have issues, your doors wouldn't open, your floors wouldn't be uh, level. Stuccoed crack, your plumbing would probably fracture and leak. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's not on a hill, so it's not going to slide away like half the houses in San Clemente actually currently are, because they under-engineered them, you know, uh, 50, 60 years ago. Yeah, and if we don't deal with this issue, if nothing was done about that, we could have a situation where the back half of the structure would start to sink and uh, there's really no no telling how far it would sink you could have kind of a leaning leaning tower yep. you know effect on the on, on the on the structure here I have a pretty good one yeah 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 so I have a, a friend that I've uh, worked with for quite a while and uh, he bought this really cool house up on up on the hill here in San Clemente and just uh, came in and we talked a lot before he bought it and you know kind of just gave him some recommendations about getting uh, some geology like some consulting work done in there and so he had a geologist come in kind of look at the property and the geologist said everything was cool everything was fine so the guy invested quite a bit of money in remodeling the property and ended up having a lot of a lot of uh, settlement because what they had is uh, well expansion and settlement the soils will expand when when they get a lot of rain and so that that'll cause basically the whole foundation to lift if it's not deep enough um, and then conversely it'll start to shrink back when when the soil dries out so he had some he had some issues not major issues he's not sliding down a hill or anything like that but just where you know like doors were out of adjustment that he just put in and you know some some walls cracking and stuff like that and just stuff that you don't want you know in a in a house that you just just remodeled so Absolutely. yeah yeah and actually he he's he's kind of in the process of that right now just dealing with a lot of the drainage around the site and l luckily it wasn't an issue where you know it's sliding off off the hill or off of a cliff or something like that it's something that's correctable but it's just um you know stuff that that uh that could have been done Preventive, you know, preventatively, and then it would have saved a little bit of, of cost and and uh, and you know just trouble mm. down the road. So. I looked at a house yesterday on Beach Road. It just came to mind, and the whole backyard washed away. That's yeah. July Fourth yeah. weekend. We had really high 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 tides and big surf. And uh, this guy was looking at this house for about five and a half million dollars, and probably going to have to put about two million into it. And so he was asking my advice about about whether he should buy this house or another house and we looked at uh, about 20 feet of his backyard that was sand and had gotten washed away and he was asking me whether we could actually shore up the backyard and figure out a way to build on top of the sand and and keep keep that sand from washing away and I that was my advice to him as I said you could you know spend hundreds of thousands of dollars putting concrete back here and building walls but if they don't let you you know drill caissons and get down to bedrock here you're, you're just gonna lose it again so that was probably a pretty relevant example of, of the parable right there that I could probably get us in there but there'd be huge <laughs> liability I don't think the real estate agent would be very nah, happy nah, <laughs> it's like yeah don't buy this nah. house like Taylor said the storm it's gonna come they always do for these two men it didn't mean that the guy that built it on the firm foundation didn't have to weather the storm. In fact, the people that were listening into Jesus telling the story, they knew about the rains of Palestine. That's where they lived. You see, in that area, it gets about the same amount of rain, about two feet of rain a year, as it does in London. 
However, in London, it collects all that rain over about 300 days because it rains 300 days a year in London. But in Palestine, it's only about 50. And so when it comes, it comes fierce. And because the land has been dry for so long, when that comes through, it will test the foundation of everything around there. And Jesus is saying, life is difficult. There will be trials, but we can't get around this either. It's clear by the way that Matthew writes it, that he's also talking about judgment day. I don't fully understand judgment day. I don't fully understand ju God's judgment. We've talked about it before. So we won't get into it in depth, but there is judgment. There is the, the judgment of our life and there's also God's judgment that will come and our foundation. Remember, it's not us, it's not what we do, it's that we connect it to the rock. And the rock that Jesus is talking about is his teaching, what he's told us all through the Sermon on the Mount. And so the question is, do you know his teaching? Because how can we put it into practice if we don't know it? Both of those builders knew the word of God. One chose to put it into practice and one did not. It doesn't always matter what we think or believe. It matters what we do. God wants us to be blessed. He wants to give us this amazing life. And so he gives us his teaching. As we say all the time, Jesus doesn't want something from you. He wants something for you. All of these, all of this teaching is for our benefit because he wants us to endure because our foundation determines our future. We talked about the weather in Palestine, but you know the weather of life. There's the sprinkles where we, you know, have our political climate. Even I would say the coronavirus situation, um, is more of a sprinkle in the larger picture. I know people right now that are struggling with breast cancer. Not only the woman who's struggling with it, but her husband and her kids. That's a storm, that's a heavy storm. And it doesn't, it doesn't lighten the reality of the sprinkles or the, the mellow type of rain, but all of that tests our foundation. I know people who just decided marriage was just too hard for them. They just weren't into it anymore. And yet Jesus speaks on that and says, fight for this, it's valuable. And their kids are now suffering and they're suffering and they made decisions that they just wanted to build right away. They saw something, they liked it, they wanted to do it, but the foundation wasn't firm because they didn't decide to put Jesus' teaching into practice. And those families that I'm talking about right now, they know Jesus' teaching. The storms are coming. And so what I want you to get from this story is what I think Jesus wants us to get. He's pleading with us. Please listen to his words. Please go to the extra effort. It's costly. It is so much easier just to put the house up. I mean, can you imagine the two people as they're building this house? One guy has got the windows up, he's got the doors up, he's got the walls up, and this other guy's still digging, trying to get down to the rock. And his wife's gonna come by to see the progress and she's gonna look next door and then she's gonna look at him and then she's gonna look at, you know, they're putting out their deck. They're gonna see all of this happening and their kids are like, why, why can't we have that? Why, is it, why don't we have that yet? But he's wise. He doesn't want to lose it because he anticipates life. Anticipate these storms. They're coming. They always do. But have you ever been in a house where you're in the house and the rain's coming down and you're still frightened? The storm is that strong. But then after a period of time, you realize, no, I'm good. Because you have confidence in the place where you're staying. I've gone on vacation to other countries or I've done work in other countries and I don't always have that confidence when the rain comes down. But you can have the confidence. You can have the assurance. 
that you're on his solid rock. <laughs>